Hi, my name is Juniper Belmont, and in this video, I'll show you how to build a basic progressive web app with the Polymer 2 Starter Kit. This is an update to the video my colleague Marcus made last year. That one was built on Polymer 1, and this video will be using Polymer 2 and all of its new features. I've added a link to that video below. You don't need to watch that video before this video, but I'm going to be skipping over some of the basic things that that video covered. We're going to use the latest version of the Polymer CLI, which is built for Polymer 2. Polymer 2 is the latest version of the Polymer library for building web components. It's built to be closer to the web platform using native JavaScript features, and it was released earlier this year. You can go to polymer-project.org to learn about Polymer and see all the new features of Polymer 2. First, let's download a Polymer CLI with NPM. While that's installing, let's talk about what we're going to be doing in this video. So we're going to use the Polymer CLI to initialize a sample application provided by Polymer, and we'll use that application to showcase the purple model and progressive web apps as a whole. We'll then add our own code to extend this sample application. But what is the purple model, I hear you cry? Well, the purple model is an application pattern for building progressive web apps. We're going to be covering each of the different parts in full later, but let's talk about what they are first. So P is for push critical resources for the initial path, then we'll render the initial route, then we'll prefetch additional routes, and we'll lazy load everything for quicker access right away. The whole goal of the purple pattern is to create fast and responsive applications right off the bat. Now that we have the CLI, let's get started. First thing we'll do is run Polymer init, and then select the Polymer 2 starter kit. This will create the basic application that we're going to be working off of. Before we get into the code, we need to install a few more dependencies. I provided a bower.json file below. Simply copy it into your working directory and run bower install. This will create all the dependencies we need for this tutorial. We're going to do the same kind of thing as we did in our previous video. So we're going to create a to-dos manager where you can have a set of tasks with due dates, and that'll be persisted in the app. This app is composed of several different views, which are all identical to begin with. Let's create a new view by copying one of these and then changing some variables. Here, we'll just look for anything that has a three and replace it with a four. First, we'll just import our new view, and then we'll update this iron selector so that we could select our view and it will be loaded when we wanted to. Then we'll go over to iron pages, and then we'll set our view in there. So this way, our single page app will switch to that view when it's been selected with the iron selector. I said we'd talk about the purple pattern as we go along, and here's a good place to start. So this application uses the app shell model. What this means is that we have a surrounding app that just has our navigation and initial route, and then it lazily loads all the different pages that it needs is. This shows how the purple model is used. So we render the initial route, this shell, and then we'll lazily load all the different views. Let's take a quick look at what our app looks like now with our new view. So we'll go back to our terminal and do Polymer serve. This uses the Polymer CLI to serve up our static assets so that we could see them in our browser. And so it's just the basic app with our new view attached. Now let's add some more content to this. Okay, let's go back to our view and start coding. So we're gonna import a couple of things here. We're gonna import the date picker, the grid, the paper input, and a paper button. And then we'll go down to the template and we'll create a basic form first that has an input and a button and a date picker. I'm just gonna copy some styles from a different place so that we have them available. And then I'll add a grid component. Now let's go hook things up. So we go to our element and we'll create this static get properties. This is the way that Polymer 2 does properties. And then here we'll return so that we have a to do, which is an object. Um, we'll set the value here so that there's a new object every time we have a new view. And we'll have this to do's array, which will just be our array of to do's. And uh, let's do an add to do function. And all this will do will add uh, our current to do to our to do's. And it will clear 
the to-do that we have currently. I think I said the word to-do too much, and now it has lost all meaning. We'll go back to our form, and we'll set the, we'll bind the values of our input and our date picker to the to-do object that we have. And then we'll have our button call the add to-do function we have below. So let's go back to our Vaden grid, and we'll set items to our to-dos array. And then the first column will have the task, and the second column will have the due date. We'll go back to our app in the browser, and we'll go to our view, and then we'll try to create a few uh, tasks. So we'll create this task with this due date, and add it. And here we have our to-do added to our uh, grid. But if we refresh the page, then all of our to-dos are not saved. So let's hook up a storage element so that we could save our array to local storage so that next time you go to this page, all of your tasks are still available. One of the dependencies I had you install earlier is the app storage component from the Polymer Elements team. The app storage has several different elements within it that help you store data to your app's storage. It also has different kinds of components for storing to PouchDB, et cetera, but here we're just gonna be using the app local storage. So first we'll import the app, store, app local storage document. And then all we need to do to set this up is create that element down below and we'll set the keys to to-dos and then we'll set our data to data bound to our array. And now if we go back to our app and we create some to-dos, when we refresh the page, all of them are persisted. And this is all done just within the app local storage document element. Now that we have our app in good working order and we have local storage, let's talk about making this app offline accessible. This is something that's a very important thing for a progressive web app to do. And for this, we're gonna use the service worker. One of the best parts about the Polymer Starter Kit is that it comes with a way to create a service worker right out of the gate. So to do this, we'll just run Polymer Build, and then this will create a built version of our app that we can then serve. And one of the things that this does is it also builds a service worker for us. Now, when we do Polymer serve in our build folder, when we go to the browser, we can load it up once. And then if we turn off the network connectivity, if we use the uh, dev tools to turn off network and we refresh, then you could see that the service worker produces a cached version of our page so that we could access our app even when we're not connected to the network. One of the other things that the Polymer Starter Kit does for you is it pre-caches or preloads different routes before you go to them so that you're available as soon as you click on a different view. To make this work with our new view, we go to the polymer.json file provided by the Starter Kit. And here, we just add our view as a fragment. So now when Polymer builds this, it knows that that's a dependency that it needs, and it doesn't have to load it at first, but it can load it after our app has run. And just like that, we've built a progressive web app with our to-do manager using the Polymer Starter Kit and the Polymer 2 CLI. Before we go, let's talk about how we saw the purple pattern in use in this application. The Polymer Starter Kit does a lot of this for us, so the initial view is pushed to the browser, and then it's rendered before any of the other views. And then we use the fragments and the service worker to preload additional views. And then we lazily load those views so we don't actually hit them until we need to. In this way, we create a much faster application that loads quickly and is progressive in the best possible way. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about the Polymer Starter Kit or the Polymer CLI, go to polymer-project.org or go to vaden.com elements to learn about all of the different Vaden elements, which now work on Polymer 2. 
or check out our YouTube page and there are more tutorials and guides and videos about Polymer. And hit the subscribe button to get the latest videos. Thanks so much. Take care.